everybody, welcome to Muse TV. We have a special guest today, a uh, great documentary, Bastards Row. It, it, it's something you, I've been talking about it and you've seen the videos. It's an amazing documentary, John Hancock. What was it about your mission? And what was it, what was the what reason? Please tell the people the reason behind your walking across America. Well, I had, you know, the impetus for this really came as a hit to rock bottom. And I had, I had gotten out of the Marine Corps in 2009 and I went to University of Maryland and I double majored in Arabic and Russian. Uh, and I was, things were going well for a while. And probably about year two uh, in school, I just stopped really going to class and I started finding the bars. And so I would, I'd become a bar fly. And then there was a DUI. And then a year almost to the day from the first one, there's a second DUI. And after that second DUI, it was really, uh, there was a real long, hard look in the mirror uh, of, you know, I don't want to be here anymore. Um, I've let my name, my family name down. I've let the Marine Corps down. I'm just a piece of shit. Uh, and there's no reason for me to be here anymore. So I decided I would uh, empty as many pills as I possibly could into my stomach. And while that was happening, um, I started actually feeling the effects of all those pills. And it was wrenching and it's, I was cramping a lot and then I was, I was dying. And so I got in the car and I drove from College Park, Maryland to the Baltimore VA hospital. That's a, normally about a 45 minute drive. I made that drive in about 17 minutes. Um, so I was cooking. Uh, I got there and, and I'm in the emergency room of the VA hospital and they're stomach pumping and nodes and tubes and wires and um I live and then I'm in the uh, in the Baltimore VA hospital psych ward, which is on the sixth floor. And so if you ever hear someone say, oh, I went to the sixth floor, they went to the psych ward. And uh, so I was there. And while I was in there, I was watching the news one morning. And this is back in November of 2014. And there was a guy named Mike Vitti, uh, and he was walking across the country. He, he had walked one kilometer for each person that was killed in Iraq or Afghanistan since the 01 kickoff. And I, it it just. I, I knew right then I wanted to do that and it just spoke to me and I didn't know how to do it because I was, I was massively overweight. Uh, I was 308 pounds. Um, so I got out of the, of the hospital and immediately got on a mountain bike and rode my mountain bike for 10 months and went from 308 to about 198 pounds and said, okay, now that I've, I've dropped all the weight, now I can go walk across country and go meet with my brothers and meet with, you know, the gold star families of our fallen. And that's really kind of how it all came to be. Yeah. And that, it's it's such an amazing story especially how everything came about um because it's like it's almost like a i'm glad that you're still here that's that's yeah, brother. because i think that's uh because this story would never have been told no well, no what, it wouldn't have. what has what was it like meeting these gold star families and talking to them during this during this that time? that was always the toughest one for me um because and i've, I've spoken about this quite a few times it's that their son didn't come home. And so when they see me, uh, I think they see their son. And that was a really hard thing to share with. And it, but I learned that I, I was capable of sharing in that emotion. And I, I learned that it was healing not only for me, but for them. And I had to continue to do it. And it just it was it became the bedrock of this entire thing. And then when Brian heard your story and everybody heard your story, and they came up to you and said, we would like to document your mission. How did that all come about? And what was that like for you? I was, I was in Slidell, Louisiana, when I got a phone call from Brian. Never met him before. We went to high school together. Uh, but, you know, he was a year ahead of me and he was a jock and I was a pothead. So those two don't mix. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, uh, so I never knew him. And he lived next door to my childhood best friend, Dave Parks, who's also in the documentary. And... Uh, they, they started talking and next thing you know, I'm, I'm getting a phone call. I get a, I get a call from Dave that says, Hey man, I, I don't know if you know Brian Morrison or not, but he wants to, he wants to call you. I wanted to make sure that was okay before I just go out and give your number to somebody. I was like, yeah, sure, man. No worries. I, I don't know him. So whatever. Uh, so he called and we just kind of felt each other out for a while. And, uh, I was very nervous because, um, uh, you know, these things can go one of two ways. They can either go good or it can be, it can be a total shit show. And fortunately, uh, you know, Brian came from a place of wanting to understand versus wanting to sensationalize. 
And so he really uh, did a very good job of understanding where I was coming from, understanding uh, what combat looks like to veterans coming home uh, and what their process coming home looks like. And so he took that on uh, with an open heart and an open mind. And I think that's really the reason why uh, we've done so well with this. Yeah. And I think that's why I look at it and I'm glad to hear that is the way it worked out because, and you could see it in the documentary and the finished product yeah. because it could have, like you said, it could have gone so many different ways. Right. Right. And it and hurt your mission as well. Sure. Like that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's always scary because we see the movies in Hollywood and, and there, it is just sensationalizing mm -hmm. war or whatever it is, whatever topic they want to hit. It's just, it's all just grandstanding. And, uh, I don't, I, there's not a single film, uh, in that any veteran has watched that they actually go, yeah, they got it right. Okay. And maybe the only one is probably saving private Ryan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the one thing, like my uncle was a part of the Marine Corps and he right. watches these films and he's all like, if uh, the military was like that, it would have been a lot different. <laughs> exactly. It would have been a whole lot different if the military was this way. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. But um, tell us a little bit about your military service, if you like. Uh, yeah. So I'm a Marine, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, through and through, man. So I, uh, I, I joined, uh, <clears throat> I graduated boot camp September 7th of 2001. And then four days later, the towers fall and the world changes. Um, I ended up doing eight deployments in eight years, which is um, pretty much unheard of, but uh, I cut my teeth uh, in the infantry with 2nd Battalion, 4th Marines, and then moved over to 2nd Counterintelligence, Human Intelligence Company. Uh, I became an interrogator and a, and a source handler. Uh, and so I was uh, doing that for uh, a whole bunch of different units across the spectrum uh, of military operations. Uh, which took me to some really neat places. I went to Africa uh, more times than a person probably ever would, uh, which was really neat. Uh, and so I, I actually fell in love with Africa. Uh, and then, yeah, just all around the world. And uh, that that really was a defining moment for me, I think, was, was that eight-year period. Um, experiencing so many different countries and so many different people and uh, you know, growing up as a Navy brat, I had already moved around the world a lot. And so it was it was it was nothing new to me. Uh, but having and getting to experience uh, those cultures as an older person, uh, as a grown man at that point, uh, really kind of shaped me and, and gave me uh, a very utopic look at the world. Um, and so I, you know, I kind of I look at that that way now. Exactly. And that's the one thing that I guess, like my uncle, my uncle, when he was in the military, he was in Japan. Yeah. He was telling me like it, that was probably the best thing that he experienced. Was oh, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're going to travel, you're going to, you're going to see things, you're going to meet people, you can experience foods and cultures that you never would have experienced. Um, you know, it's, it's really neat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's the one thing, like I have military in my family. A lot of people have military in their family. Yeah. And, uh, and the one thing that I experienced after that 9-11 was that I saw friends come back and oh come back from overseas and just not the same. Yeah. And, and I lost a couple of friends because of that. Yeah. What was, what, it, what are some of the things you saw and some of the things that you, have you been helping other veterans kind of adapt now and kind of like being there to talk and being there since you've been in that experience? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've always found, and I really understood this on the walk, that my my process is to talk and to engage. Mm -hmm. um, it's something I'm comfortable with. Uh, I'm a talkative dude anyway, so you can't ever get me to shut up. The, the wife has to look at me some days and be like, okay, can we not talk to everyone in the store today? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. We'll see what happens, honey. Um, but no, I've, uh, I found that talking uh, and being honest around other veterans unconsciously gives them the ability to do the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, when one guy kind of takes that leap, uh, you, you become, and I, I don't want to say I'm a leader in this space because I'm not, but um, I, am, I am helping. Uh, and in order to do that, I have to be honest and I have to be honest all the time. So I started a nonprofit called Bastards Road Project, and I actually our mission, our mission, our tagline is, you know, walk long distances, figure some shit out. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it was for me. And so what I wanted to do was give veterans the opportunity to see what I had gone through 
uh, in a very truncated time because I'm not taking you on 5,800 miles. We're just not doing it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I was like, I've already done it, but if you want to do it, you can go do it and I'll support you. Absolutely. But no, I'm not doing this again. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, take the, take some veterans out, uh, you know, for 20, 30, 40 miles over a weekend, uh, over three or four days and show them, show them what they fought for in some of the most amazing outdoor spaces, you know, in all these national parks. And so I, I try to give that to them uh, and allow them the experience uh, of, you know, not knowing where you're going uh, and, you know, just getting there and continuing to push through and showing veterans how absolutely strong, both mentally and physically, they still are. Yeah. And so I wanted to do that for them. And one thing I did want to ask you, I want you to kind of go in, Bastards Road. Was that your, um, I heard, I remember in the documentary saying that it was part of you, that was the name of you guys in your. Yeah, our, my first, story about that. yeah, my first unit is second battalion, fourth Marines, and we're known as the magnificent bastards. Mm-hmm. And so we were, we were throwing around names early on. I, I, I was still on the walk and we were kind of coming up with names of what, what do you call this thing? And. Uh, Robin Townley, actually, um, one of the guys in the documentary, you see him about halfway through. Um, he he kind of started chiming in a little bit and he was like, well, what do you think about this? And I was like, oh, what do you think about, okay, so it's a road. And then he was like, Bastard's Road. And I was like, yes, that is absolutely it. And then it was an argument over where we put the damn apostrophe. <laughs> so, I mean, we just, you know, it's like, okay, is it ownership of, is it plural ownership? Is it plural possessive? And so we're just arguing back and forth. And finally we came up with, yeah, absolutely. It's it's kind of a plural possessive. Yeah, well, John, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> this is a title. <laughs> I know how hard titles can be. And you just made it sound like it was just like that. Yeah, well, I mean, when you're when you're operating around a bunch of different Marines, I mean, things just kind of tend to happen quickly. It's like, this is how it is. This is what we're doing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Hey, John, please tell us, um, where can people find your nonprofit if they want to support you and support sure, what you're doing? Absolutely. So bastardsroadproject.org is your uh, is your best you know spot to go right now. Uh, of course, we're on Instagram as Bastards Road Project and then on Facebook as well. Uh, if you hit any of those, you'll find us. Uh, you can read about the mission statement. And then uh, we'll have a new, because we're revamping a couple of things, but we'll have a, an actual application uh, tab that you can fill out. Uh, but this year we wanted to keep it to, because I'm out of Phoenix right now, so we wanted to keep it to Arizona-based veterans first to show proof of concept mm-hmm. uh, and continue to get uh, the support from the local state and, and uh, our area before we start building it out to all these other areas that eventually it'll go to. And I really look forward to seeing that. Awesome, man. Keep us involved. Let us know as you grow. We'd love to be a part of it and be able to, especially if you have any tags where you put it on, because now almost every platform seems to have a, uh, a donate tag. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, um, absolutely. We have any, that. Please let us know, because if we, ha- if we have it already now, we'll mm-hmm. add it onto this video. We'll make sure, sure that you get your support, because I think this is a... One, your story was amazing. I love the documentary. I, I don't usually say what are my thoughts on the documentary but this one is something that is your story was so so well done and brought to life and i i can't say enough and whatever you guys need and whatever help we could give we definitely will help out absolutely brother thank you so much yeah i'll, I'll get all that information to you great thank you so much and uh thank you for watching muse tv if you like this video don't forget to like subscribe and check out bastards road it's coming out, uh, I believe it's May 11th, correct? May 11th, yep. May 11th, and it's uh, right in time for Memorial Day weekend. And it's a, it's a great way to honor our troops and to see what's going on. So definitely check it out. This is some, And John's story is amazing. So definitely. Links are will be in the description, and we'll see you soon here on Muse TV.